Hello and welcome to my ultimate definitive tier list for this game. I'm going to be doing a fresh save tier list and then clearing this and then doing a new game plus tier list. Now this is after doing all of the advanced guides except for Quahog and Decimal. Um, I still understand where those units stand in the metagame. Um, and also for fresh save, some of these units aren't going to be viable. Uh, but we're going to do fresh save. We're going to kind of go through it relatively quickly. And then we're going to do new game plus. Some units might be more viable than you realize, some might be less, uh, but I tried to make this a little bit more weighted to th some things being able to be in C tier, um, so like situationally good. So this doesn't mean the unit's bad, like no units are bad in this game, and this is to try to like weigh down the tier list so that we can kind of distinguish the units from each other. Uh, there aren't really bad units, uh, like any unit has a viable like build or at least one viable build and any unit can spam items which is always at least situationally good or decent it's not as good as like b tier but let's say for the sake of argument they're like a c tier okay so to start off uh, we have s plus which is like very op game breaking uh, s almost broken so it's just really good it's like extremely good we have a which is very strong meaning it's like always able to be used B is just generally good, like the relative strength of the unit. Uh, we're, we are going to factor things like item spam in, uh, because like Piccoletta, for example, is really good spamming items. She has six range, and she, de she deals increased damage when spamming items, so that's going to be factored in. And then C, situationally good. Uh, so one thing to consider, though, like the reason why I usually rank things kind of in like B, A, and S tier for this game is... Nothing's really bad, and if you use something in its, in its most optimal way, it tends to actually be very good. So if you run a build on a unit that plays into that unit's strengths, it's generally going to be like A tier. This game is actually fairly well balanced, so very few things are bad. Uh, but let's start with Benedict. So Benedict, uh, he's definitely not S+, plus. he's definitely not C, because he's, he's generally always good. Um... He has some big gimmicks, uh, like Dragon Shield can be good. A lot of people swear by it. Not a lot of people. A few people in my comments swear by it. I don't really know how many people. Like, most people agree Benedict is generally good. I would say overall he's, like, very strong. Uh, on a fresh save... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. This is fresh save. For fresh save, I would say he's B tier. All right, so this is... We're starting with fresh save, and then we'll do new game plus. For fresh save, I'd say he's B tier. Bulwark and Raging Beast are good in the first couple chapters, but as your stats scale the the effect doesn't so getting like plus five or plus six strength or whatever the the amount is it's somewhere between four to six isn't as high impact as you level up especially once you hit end game and then he basically just uses now on things which really isn't useful on fresh save fresh save a lot of the units you start off with are just good to go and they don't really need help they don't need like turn accelerated twofold turn is really the only standout thing dragon shield you get that like mid game it's okay uh, there's better things. Like, by the time you get his Dragon Shield, you already have better things. So it's you can do it, and you can kind of break the game a little bit, maybe, but you kind of have to be really turtly. And some of the maps, like, if a map can be broken with Dragon Shield, it's probably not even a hard map. Um, I think that's fair. Uh, I'd say he's generally good. Frederica on a fresh save, definitely not B or C. Definitely on S+, plus, so it's either S or A. So it just depends on... Her AoE is pretty good. I would say she's just A tier. I would say she's just very strong. Uh, same thing with Roland. I would say these are both just very strong on a fresh save. They're both just good. They have good AoE damage. Uh, they can clean things up. You know, that's pretty much all they do is just AoE damage. Uh, Gila, she's just very good. You know, she's a healer. She removes conditions. She has a lot of things for one TP. She can use items to conserve TP and put, like, res on people endgame. On a fresh save, she's quite good. Anna on a fresh save. Some people might be tempted to put her into S. Uh, but honestly, I'd say she's just A tier. On a fresh save, like, her big build is a new game plus build. I think she actually does get better, but people just don't understand how to use her if they think she gets worse. Uh, what you do is you just spam items and then deadly blaze things as, as you want, like, as needed. So, like, you just spam items when enemies are in groups. When they're single targets, you get behind them, deadly blaze them in the back, smack them, the rest of your units spike it down. If it's a boss, deadly blaze debuffs them. Uh, but for fresh save, 
She doesn't have Deadly Blaze. She can't spam big AoE items yet. She's just decent. She's just good. Eridor is definitely S tier on a fresh save. He definitely carried my fresh save hard deathless guides. Um, Provoke is just really good. The range on that thing, like he's he's like the best shut one of the best shutdown units in the game by far. Uh, Hewat definitely S tier. Uh, she can grab high ground, disable enemy archers, and just sit next to them and even body block them sometimes where they can't even hit her physically because they can't move. She can deny them ladder access. She can pin things to the ground. She can spam blind every turn. She can deal like easy back crits. She's just insane. She can solo some maps. She, she doesn't even need a battery. She doesn't need any support. She can literally be left alone to just flank. She's insane. Currentin, easy S tier. Uh, he gets three. He gets access to three crazy things really early on. He gets his AOE, you know, uh, icy breath, pretty early on, which is just good AOE damage. He gets frosty fetters, which is high single target plus eighty percent to 90% silence, which is insane, because if he uses that in an enemy mage or an enemy healer, there's an extremely high chance, it's very unlikely they won't be silenced. Like, they will get silenced most of the time. So he, he spikes and sl he shuts down, and then he also has Wall of Ice. All of that's 2 TP. Like, he has AoE damage, single target shutdown, and utility turtle ice wall right out of the gate. And then he gets, he gets Shield of Ice, which is absolutely broken too. You can, if a boss hits you, they take like 100-something damage on counterattack, and it nullifies a hit of damage. He's insane. Uh, Rudolph, very strong. Uh, putting things to sleep is good. The traps are good. Damage is decent. Uh, for fresh save, I would say Saranoa is just A tier. He's, um... Actually... I don't know if I should bump Rudolph down. I mean, he's... I mean, the, the traps are good. They shut down bosses. I think that's fair. Uh, Julio, definitely S tier on a fresh save. Getting Moment of Truth TP cost minus one, getting that thing for one TP, you get one TP from Julio, and then a, a Strength and Magic Attack buff. It's so good to use on like Roland, Frederica, and Corentin, it's insane. It's just ridiculous. Every turn he's just giving people three turn damage buffs and battery, it's ridiculous. Plus when he kills something, and he can do that by standing next to things and follow up attacking to trigger his uh, TP KO plus, he can, he can indirectly get profit but he can indirectly profit tp just from standing next to low health enemies by getting follow-up attacks triggered from other allies so pretty insane uh for hasabara i would say on a fresh save she's situationally good uh she doesn't really bring a ton to the table on a fresh save i guess her damage is okay um she's harder to use than roland because roland's hit roland's attacks hit in like a line and flash of steel is pretty huge value if a bunch of enemies are lined up or if you just want to poke things really far away uh that's like you know all that's really good the opportune attack back crit back crit thing is really good uh rush is easier to play around with than hasabara's thing um she's not bad but she's just like like some i don't know she doesn't bring enough damage to the table especially early on and she does get trekking i think like kind of mid game which is decent but I would rather have, fla like, Flash of Steel is very good. It can hit, like, plus or five minus height, and it can hit up to five tiles away. And if you run up behind a group of enemies, especially ones that are, like, you know, being CC'd and shut down anyways and just back crit them all, it's ridiculous. So it's not even close in terms of damage. And then the healing, the healing's kind of weird. Uh, Jill is just better. Like, if you, like, if basically her damage and her healing just aren't there. I think she's kind of just, like, okay. Narv on a fresh save, I would say is just generally good. He's not... He doesn't really bring anything to the table. He doesn't bring, like, shutdown. He basically just has, like, damage and then healing. But he has no TP management. Frederica can get KO TP plus really early on. And then Corentin can get TP on ice relatively quickly. But Corentin's options are better than Narv's. Uh, like, he gets, you know, 90% silence is better than 30% paralyze. Because silencing even like an enemy archer will make it do way less damage. Even like silencing any single enemy is way better than 30% paralyzed. So I don't think it's a really fair comparison. And and his wind attack is only really good on New Game Plus when you get the extend extend your reach. So uh, Yens on a fresh save. He's at least A. You can get the trap reduction, the trap cost reduction, pretty like early, kind of mid game. I don't really think the tra like the traps are good, but it's more like a boss counter thing. But with good play, you don't need it. 
the latter thing is kind of nice. I'll put him at A tier. You, you have to play around him. You either have to play around the broken ladder thing, or you have to play around the traps in a specific way. But I would I would argue just running like more damage or more shutdown is usually more optimal than running Yens. And with as far as like dealing with bosses, you usually can just have a tank. It's usually better to have like Arador just have his back face away and just get hit in the back than have Yen spamming traps. But the traps are good. Um, I'm just putting him here because I don't know. I don't really think he's he's not almost broken on a fresh save. That's for sure. Uh, Lionel on a fresh save, I would just say. I don't, actually, yeah, I'd say he's generally good. On New Game Plus, he's good because of Golden Opportunity, which is absurdly broken. It does like insane damage and 100% temps up to five targets at range. So, uh, but when he doesn't have that, he kind of just single target Furies at range, and then eventually gets Endless Speech, and is just kind of okay. Uh, he's decent. Uh, Picoletta on a fresh save. Um, I would just say she's very good. The decoys are good. They really help you out. Uh, especially on the early levels. They The decoys actually deal meaningful damage on a fresh save. They actually hit for good damage. And they also can tank like 3 to 6 hits, which is insane. So like you can get away with like putting like 1 or 2 decoys out of match and then Piccoletta just throws items the rest of the match. And you can, you can farm to get the 200 GP items pretty easily, even on a fresh save. So she's still kind of like a baby item spammer at this point. Uh, Medina on a fresh save. Actually is B tier. Uh, once she gets her thing, she's here. But you don't have the economy on a fresh save to really make use of her kit. And you don't even get TP Physic until like 75% through the game. So she's just decent. Um, the main thing that sucks about her is that you're burning all of your cash on a fresh save to upgrade all of your units. And doing this costs all literally all of your money, and you know you can farm a ton to to justify running her, but it, it just feels stupid. Uh, frankly, she's a new game plus unit, and if you try to use her on a fresh save with TP physic, there's like no upside. You don't need the TP. Like you can literally just spam these two, and he can glacial moon just with Julio, and it's totally fine. Throw an ice tile down on him, keep moment of truth with him. He can get a glacial moon off every other turn. That's more than good enough on fresh save. Um, but also the cost of using her is too extreme, so she kind of suffers. Azana, definitely strong. Uh, right out of the gate, she just gets 60% paralyzed against enemies the same level as her, plus single target spike. It's always good. It's never bad. 60% Par paralyzed for two turns. Enemies cannot dodge. You have 100% hit rate against paralyzed enemies. It's insane. Two turns of shutdown foes. It can hit a lot of bosses. It'll hit for like 30%. But 30% chance to paralyze a boss for two turns is substantial. Uh, it's usually closer to like 20 because the bosses tend to be higher level. But even a 20% chance, you know, one in five, you hit a boss five times, it's going to probably get paralyzed. By that point, it's probably dead. But pretty decent odds, you know, considering it also damages them. Uh, Archibald in a fresh save, I would say is actually quite bad. Uh, you have to pay... You have to use very precious and, and, and scarce resources to unlock four movement on him. If you use Corintin or any other Ice Mage like Narv or even Ice Tiles in general, the dude has two movement. If there's rain on the ground, he has two movement. He doesn't get a swift end until like the last chapter or two. And he gets an escapable arrow, I think like 50 to 60% through the game. He is not good on a fresh save. This is a new game plus or end game unit. End game, he's okay. Uh, end game, a new game plus, he is a good unit. But on a fresh save, he starts out very rough, very slow. He's basically just, like, terrible. Because he does similar damage to Huet, and without a swift end, Huet is just pure upside. There's no reason to run Archibald when you have Huet on a fresh save. There's Unless you just want to run him because you like him. Because, like, without a swift end, his damage is just worse. Because so swift end is what pushes him up. And also his other kit that you unlock towards the end game is what pushes his damage higher than Huet's. So until he gets that, he's he's objectively worse than Huet in every way in terms of mobility, in terms of what he brings to the team, in terms of damage. He needs the rest of his kit. Uh, Cordelia on a fresh save, you get her at chapter 15. So <laughs> I'm going to put her at C tier. She needs upgrades. By the point in time you get her, you probably don't have the resources you need to unlock her upgrades, so she's definitely, like, bad on the first... Like, she's a new game plus unit. 
which is unfortunate because she's like the only other healer early on aside from Medina that's free at least like Medina costs big money uh, Travis on a fresh save I would say is C tier there's really no upside to running him on a fresh save like Eridor is basically just everything Travis wants to do but better he does like maybe slightly less damage than Travis but that's Probably not even true, because if Eridor has, like, four enemies provoked and keeps counterattacking them, his damage adds up, and he does more damage than most people realize. So just by spamming provoke, he's probably going to out-damage Travis and out-tank him. Uh, but he's not really that good. Same thing with Trish. Uh, Milo, she, I would say, is A-tier on a fresh save. She doesn't get her tempt until kind of, like, 70% to 80% through the game. But she's still very dodgy and can just run in and just like smack dudes in the back with her poison attack for decent damage and just is hard to kill. So she's okay. Uh, she's she's like forced on some maps as like a bonus unit, so it's fine. But she gets going once you get her. Um, she's okay. Uh, Maxwell on a fresh save actually is actually. Hold on, let me change this. Let's do. Let's uh, add a row below. We will do a D tier actually. All right, let's edit this. This will be D. This is just for fresh save, and then we'll change the color. So for fresh save, Maxwell is just straight up bad. Uh, I think Trish is bad on a fresh save as well. Um, Archibald? I think he is bad on a fresh save. She's, like, she's actually not horrible. I mean, to be honest, when you unlock her, she's, like, not bad. She's more, like, I guess... We'll put situationally because like why would you if you're, if Gila's already upgraded Gila why would you not just run her she's just better until she gets her TP thing and all this other shit um, but she can be better it just depends on the team comp and then Travis I would say is actually bad I think these are bad on a fresh save he's just he has no revive until later uh, someone pointed this out and I didn't realize he had locked it so late but that's a completely fair point um, I think this is well. He does have steel back. I'll put him in C. All right, Flanagan on a fresh save. I would say is C. He's not that good on a fresh save. Uh, he needs Rampart, which requires superior resources, which are extremely scarce on a fresh save. And you need to upgrade all this shit. It's very, it's way too difficult to do this. Like chapter, when, you know, whenever you get him, which is usually around chapter 10 to the end game. Uh, kind of hard to get, kind of hard to use. Uh, he needs Ramparts. Once he gets Ramparts, he's like here, but until then... On a fresh save, no. Grama is bad on a fresh save, I would say. She needs to get extremely high evasion and get all the crazy, like, evasion bracelets and shit and be on ice and all this other stuff. And until she can do that consistently, she's definitely bad. Avlar on a fresh save is also bad. She doesn't have most of her kit. She needs to get Bloody Cross. She needs to get Desperate Defense, which happens. She might, she might start with Desperate Defense. I'm pretty sure she gets it, like, level 27 or something. But it's not. It takes a while to get there. And she's she's just like low mobility. You have to upgrade her. Like you just you're handed like a veteran unit who has no upgrades at like chapter like 17 or something. It's either 17 or 18, but you get to use her for like a few maps. And she doesn't have Lone Wolf either. And you only get her on the golden route. So if this is on a fresh save, she doesn't have Lone Wolf. Um, you're probably gonna have to run lowered unit count because you won't have that many unlocks on a fresh save because like most of these are route specific. Like these ones are. Whoops, I bumped Trish up. <laughs> this is route specific. This is route specific. This is route specific. Uh, where's the other one? Who else is route specific? She's route specific, but golden route. Oh yeah, Mile is route specific. Uh, but yeah, she doesn't have Lone Wolf, and she just doesn't have Bloody Cross, and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to upgrade her. Uh, early on, or like this, this late in the game, like you get her near, like for like three chapters or something, four chapters maybe. It's it's hard to start running her. She gets Lone Wolf by like on the last level, maybe the second to last, <laughs> and that's like her big upside is Lone Wolf. Uh, Decimal on a fresh save. Um, hmm. You don't have enough battery. I would say he's like C. Like the range is good, but you just don't have the economy to spam the battery he needs. Because he needs Medina to do well. And when he has Medina, he's probably more A. Uh, but in this case, it's just hard to run him. Uh, Giovanna, I would say is like C for fresh save. Uh, it's hard to set her up. She needs, the, she needs to be able to spam AoE stones. Um, 
She needs Gaia's Roar. She needs to be able to spam AoE stones, maybe catch some batteries. She needs Gaia's Roar. Um, can't be difficult to use her under those circumstances without, without all that shit. Uh, but she could probably still do something. It's really hard to say how good she would be. Because, like, her main downside is that she wants things lined up, which can be hard to do. Like, if there's any elevation that breaks her line, like, she's, like, a kind of map dependent. Like, she's, she's basically the definition of situationally good. All right, and then Kohog on a fresh save. He probably won't have most of his broken stuff, so I'd say he's probably just generally good for what he can bring to the table. All right, so no one really is S-plus or game-breaking on a fresh save. Some things are just almost broken. Uh, so here's my fresh game. Or, fre yeah, fresh save hard mode tier list uh we'll we'll leave d tier in for the new game plus but honestly i don't think anything is going to really be below b because everything just becomes broken so all right so let's reset all right oh i reset everything too fuck <laughs> i didn't want it to reset the tiers i guess um all right add a row above make it this or no that's that one okay let's change this to I like these colors all right, this will be S plus game, game breaking, S almost broken, very strong, sometimes strong. I guess I think what was it, it was like generally good. Oops. Let's get rid of that caps there. Sometimes good. Bad. All right. Okay. Okay, great. We have our tier list. All right. So this is new game plus. So looking at this list, who is bad? I don't think anyone's bad. So we can just remove this, frankly. Uh, because we're, we're, we're basing this on how good they are at New Game Plus. And New Game Plus, honestly, once you get once you understand the game, is actually very easy. And it's so easy that most of these units will destroy it in a way that's not even funny. Uh, so Game Breaking. I'm actually going to put Flanagan in Game Breaking. This might seem controversial. I've kind of moved him up over the, over like, you know, the past couple of weeks. But he does break the game. Ramparts. And shielding stance, just just ramparts breaks the game. The fact that you can beat every single hard mode map easily with just five units, you could drop Avlora from Death Ball and you could still easily beat it. You could replace her with Frederica. You could replace replace her with Azana. You could replace her with anything. It doesn't even matter. Uh, just the fact that he can do that consistently across every single map and ramparts just makes your backline virtually invincible and lets you not even think when playing the game and it, it's easy to do it cheeses every single map and it takes no skill or thought like it's just completely easy it just smooths the game over he's game he's s plus flanagan is s plus game breaking when i originally was all hyped up saying he was god tier he is god tier with rampart it's too strong it should do like 25 or 35 percent damage reduction 50 percent's way too good it's way too much um so now this is in, in regards to New Game Plus. So the, the pace, like things tend to die faster. Uh, so for New Game Plus, I would say Benedict is just very strong. Uh, a lot of people really like Dragon Shield, but Ramparts is just better because Ramparts doesn't end. Dragon Shield, you get hit once and it ends. Ramparts is just there forever. You maintain it easily. You just need a, like one point of battery every three turns, which if you're running Medina or Julio, that's very easy to achieve. And you just always have ramparts. So the big upside of Dragon Shield is that you can use it more aggressively. But honestly, crowd control is better. If you want to be hyper aggressive in this game, uh, getting paralyzes off, getting immobilizes off, uh, blinds, furies, tempts, this is way better than Dragon Shield. Because a temp tempting an enemy that has lower defensive stats than Milo just created a lightning rod for other enemies to attack. Because enemies prioritize based on if they can kill something and defensive stats. If you have two full health units, if Milo is standing next to an enemy, they both have full health, and she has better defensive stats than an enemy, which on average she does, they will attack that enemy. So you can be hyper aggressive with a lot of units, and you don't even need things like Dragon Shield in New Game Plus. So I would just say 
because he has Dragon Shield, he's just very strong. The other thing he has that's good is twofold turn, but in the within the context of New Game Plus, it's just decent. It's not like gonna be almost broken or game breaking. Uh, Frederica, a New Game Plus. She's at least A. I'll put her in A for now. She has really good damage, but she doesn't have like that it factor that Corentin brings to the table of Glacial Moon. Sunfall is good in some instances, uh, specifically when enemies are approaching you and you cast it, and then they all walk in, like like five of them, five of them or so, walk into where the Sunfall lands. It's really it's really skill based to set that up, but the reward for doing it usually isn't worth the effort because you have to spend five TP in two turns, and you can only move on one of those turns. So you're usually better off just hitting something with Pillar of Flame twice or Scorch twice throughout two, like over two turns instead of Sun Falling. I would just say she's A tier. Roland, I would just say he's just A tier. Uh, if you put Res Earring and Accuracy Bracelet on him, he just runs around and spams Rush and crits things in the back and it's decent. Uh, it's not gonna be almost broken and it's definitely super consistent. Uh, I was able to run him. He's really good with flanking too. He's able to flank with, like, an Anna squad, like Anna, Hewett, Roland, uh, Milo. They can just, like, push flanks and just fuck shit up, like, easily. It's just, it's pretty brainless. Uh, Gila, I would say she's just A tier. Um, or maybe not. Honestly, I kind of want to bump Benedict down. I think he's a B tier, and I think so is Gila. Um, because, like, if you don't, if you don't run Benedict you're not missing out. Like you can run him and you can abuse like dragon shield spam and that's fine. But if you don't, if you just run more damage, you're just gonna beat maps faster. And the game on new game plus is so easy once you understand it at a certain level and once you're used to certain things that you really don't miss him not being on your team. Um, but he can be okay if you wanna do like a turtle comp and just have bubbles on everyone. Uh, but aside from that, I would say he's kind of B. And then Gila, uh, her main thing is the res, the spot healing's decent, but honestly, uh, on New Game Plus, you're probably better off using different things to heal, and usually you're, you're going to be running Medina anyways. Uh, so unless you're specifically not running Medina, I would say she's like A, but like assuming you're going to be playing optimally, or at least somewhat optimally, Medina does outshine her in a huge way, because she heals while batterying. Uh, Anna is almost broken. So Anna has everything. She can invis. She can do literally everything in the game. There isn't a single thing in the game that Anna can't do in terms of like a roll. She can. Put, she has a sixty percent slumber. She can use it twice. She can run up to an enemy, hit him, put him to sleep. Run up to another enemy, hit him, put him to sleep. Or like she has to be standing next to the first enemy, and then she has to move to the second. But it's theoretically possible for her to get two shutdowns off in a single turn if she misses the first slumber she can go again she can re-roll and it also deals damage before if you can like poison the enemy then slumber them the, the poison doesn't wake them up that's not even like one of the good things either this isn't like she, her slumber stab isn't even her best thing her best thing is that she can spam healing items or damage items build up tp from not wasting tp because she has she just acts twice and then Whenever she wants, she can run up behind an enemy, stab them in the back with Deadly Blaze for massive damage, put a, a defense debuff on them to magic and, and physical, and then hit them again and put almost anything at half health every single turn and then also spam items. And then she can also go invisible and then heal things without breaking her invisibility. She can deny enemy bosses turns by going invisible and being in front of them, like on their path to your team. And then when that boss goes to attack one of your allies, assuming that you set this up correctly, they'll bump into Anna, like, you know, reveal her and waste their turn. She can waste turns from being invisible. She can slumber things. She can single target spike. She can AOE spike. She can heal. She's extremely tanky. She has insane mobility with surmount. She can use surmount twice in a row, as long as there's a height difference of one or greater to have seven move. She can surmount, like, up to high ground twice. Like, she literally can do every single thing in the game. And it's ridiculous. She is one of the strongest units in the game. She also has really high evasion, good defensive stats, good damage. There's literally never a downside to running Anna. Like, she's pure upside. Oh, Anna's overextended? Go invis. You're now invincible. <laughs> like, there's, no, there's literally never a downside. Oh, you want to go hop up plus 20 height? She can do that. Or it might be 15, but she can she can surmount really fucking high. 
So she's insane. All right, Eridor. Um, he's he almost is S plus to be honest, but uh, compared to how crazy like ramparts, you you don't even need to think with Eridor. At least like there's a chance provokes mess. You have to overextend sometimes to get your provoke off. Uh, Mage can still kill you. So like there's still threats, but him like one TP spamming provoke is crazy. Him catching battery spamming king shield is crazy. Just those two things make him S tier. Uh, Huet. Hmm. I'm always tempted to put her in S. Honestly, there really isn't ever a downside. Like, she's she's at least A tier, but I, I, I think S is fair because she literally is exactly the same from fresh save to new game plus. 75% chance to mobilize, and it can be for three turns too, by the way, is insane. You can stagger enemies while spiking them. She can grab high ground. Uh, she gets shooting star, so if she just happens to catch battery, she can be like Archibald with Inescapable Arrow. And she can back crit with that, and it also can trigger follow-up attacks, which is crazy. Like, there's some crazy shit she can do. But just the fact that she can fly around spamming three-turn immobilize on things while damaging them is insane. Because if there's like five enemies approaching you, and she pins like the enemy mage or an enemy healer, and then the rest push, that enemy is basically dead for three turns. It, all the other enemies will get out of range of it. It'll just be isolated. If you do like two-fold turn or like in tandem her or fast acting or now her, she can just like put immobilize on two things. And she's usually safe. She's usually on high ground. She can solo some maps. She's not as crazy as some of these in terms of like what she does, but she's never bad. And she always can do a lot. Uh, even like if you like let's say there's an enemy that you have like a 70 percent chance to hit she can improve her own accuracy to make it like a hundred percent or like 95 or something like she's crazy there's like no downside to using her uh, same thing with Corentin. uh for a different reason though just glacial moon spam while tp on tp on ice is active is just absolutely ridiculous there's never a downside to doing this it's it's honestly one of the best things in the game I'm almost tempted to put it in the game breaking because it's just so fucking strong. Like if he he just needs to get like one or two battery, like one or two TP every turn. Because like TP on ice, he generates two TP a turn. So he just needs two extra TP from something. And the dude is just knocking out glacial moons, doing like 20 to 30% damage to large groups of enemies from like zero to six range. It's just completely broken. Um, I think it's fair to say he's game breaking, honestly. Because, like, thinking about it, like, every single good team comp has Corentin in it. There's never a reason to not run Corentin. Same thing with, like, Flanagan. Like, once you understand how to how to set Rampart balls up, there's really no reason not to do it unless you're just doing, like, running worse units for a challenge. And he's just, he, he is game-breaking. Um, Glacial Moon is just way too strong. It's way too much damage. It's, it's the best AoE in the game, period. It has the best range. It's super safe to do. He can sit next to Flanagan and just fucking throw these things out. And nothing can stop it. There's nothing anything can do about it. <laughs> He's just way too good all the time. Uh, Rudolph, I would say, is B. Um, he can be good. He has his, his traps and his thing, but he kind of... He has mobility issues, and he has, to he has to sit still to be accurate. Otherwise, he has less accuracy than average than, like, Archibald and Huet. Archibald's accuracy is insane, but Huet's is, like, decent. And she usually is more accurate because she's on high ground, which is something she gets for free because of her flying. Uh, she also has five passive move. Uh, so she has better move, insane jump. Uh, she can make her own accuracy better actively, which is better than needing to wait. Uh, mobility is always good in games like this. Being able to move in and out of danger is essential to not dying. So if you're doing deathless, units that are slow... Units that are, like, hard to get out of bad situations tend to be liabilities. And, like, he has four move, and it's kind of rough sometimes. He's more of a defensive unit, whereas Huet can de She can do anything. She can, be de she can be defensive. She can attack. She can solo push, like, enemy archers. She can solo push, like, two enemy archers, blind one of them, and then the other one shoots her. Who cares? She blinds it next turn anyways, and then she's fine. Like, she's insane. Uh, all right, Sarah Noah... I would just say he's Azir. Uh, he has the big battery that you can use infrequently. You know, every couple of turns, he just, like, hits your back line with one TP battery. Uh, Hawk Dive is decent, some single target. Uh, he's forced on most maps, which I'm not a fan of, but whatever. He's, like, the lord, so, of the game. So I would say he's, like, very strong. Julio, 
he just becomes very strong in New Game Plus. Uh, the weapon skill TP costs are insane. Um, the only time he's almost broken is with, like, the Kohog build. But the Kohog build, honestly, is only good, like, the, the reverse space time. Because you burn through, you do, like, a high jump, a glacial moon, uh, I don't know, like, flash of steel, whatever the hell. Just burn through all your big AoEs and, and things, nuke enemies down, reset the board. The dead things don't reset. You get all your TP back, you keep doing that. So Kohog's build really hinges on other units' strength. Like, he himself doesn't really do much. He just kind of makes... He just kind of resets other things that are better than him. So to argue that Julio's S tier because he refills Kohog to then keep reverse space timing, it's like, well, really all these other units are just what are carrying your damage and they're just kind of interacting with that. So him just like in general, he's just good. The damage buff is good. Uh, the off tanking is good. Uh, the damage support, like, you know, cleaning damage up, standing next to things, getting TP KO plus off of like, you know, Sarah Noah's Hawk dives. That's basically what happens. Uh, you have Julio stand behind an enemy, and if Sarah Noah is kind of like close to the team, he kind of like moves up a little bit, Hawk dives, gives Julio some extra TP, shit like that. Um, Hasabara, I don't think, she's definitely not very strong. I did just do her advanced guide, she's definitely not very strong. Uh, the reason for this is she always has this like these like issues where... She has like some good things about her, like Desperate Defense. She's kind of like a tankier Roland with less damage. Uh, her actual listed damage is like similar to Roland, but he can hit more targets with like Flash. And Rush is a little bit easier to set up than her other thing. Because if enemies are moving towards you and Roland runs behind them and rushes and gets back crits, that's going to be way more damage than hitting them from the sides. Which, you know, like if they're lined up and their backs are facing away and she hits them on the side from the side in order to hit three enemies... It's going to be less damage in rushing from the back with, with crit boosted back crits because he has crit boost. Um, so her damage is just okay. I would say she's sometimes good. Uh, I tried experimenting with her a little bit where I would like run her with flanks and it was okay. But it didn't really blow me away and it wasn't like that useful. So it's just okay. Narv, I would say he's sometimes good. Uh, his big thing is putting magic debuff on things in a wide AoE for 2 TP. It's decent. Um... It's definitely not as safe to do as some things. You kind of have to rely on enemies being within range. Uh, Glacial Moon, by comparison, just just like it's like not even close. If I had to choose, it's obviously going to be Krenton. Uh, but Narb does have the big AOE for two TP that debuffs magic, which can help. But honestly, he's okay. He's not like I wouldn't say he's very strong because the range is like four range, so it's not even like that far, and it's just like. It can be difficult to get melee enemies where you want them. It's usually easier to have Aerodor, like, run up to things, fury them, and then, like, the rest of your team kind of wraps around or flanks their backliners and just starts nuking them from, like, angles than it is to have, like, a whole cluster of enemies in a big group and then Narv just starts winding them. Like, that's not something, that's not a situation you're going to find yourself in often. Like, when that is the case, sure, he's great. He's, like, A tier, S tier. But maybe, probably just A, but... On average, he's just like, okay. Yens, um, I almost want to put him in S. In the past, I put him in S because of the ladder thing. You can't do the ladder thing every map, though, and like enemy mages can usually hit you anyways. Um, I would say he's just strong. Like, compared to, like, the thing is with, with Yens, you don't need the traps in New Game Plus because you have ramparts and all these other broken things. Like, King, you have King Shield, you have ramparts. You have power of love. You have golden opportunity. You have things that can start fucking with bosses in a real way. And you can deal so much damage in New Game Plus that you don't need to mitigate bosses. So the traps really don't matter as much. Uh, so that's kind of his problem. Uh, for for his turret, it can like it has like it seems to like miss like forty percent of the time. Roughly, it's okay. It kind of acts as a decoy. Enemies will attack it. It's okay. Um, trap spam just isn't that high impact. I would rather just be spamming high jump and glacial moon than even fuck around with traps because like why would you even bother like just kill the enemies like you like, this is new game plus so you have crazy bullshit uh lionel golden opportunity spam is definitely broken uh you can easily farm like 20k in two minutes which is re really stupid you can get like 20k in two to three minutes which is like two like golden opportunities almost three because it's 7.5k on hard mode 
So you just keep doing a two-minute farm. You do this for like 30 minutes. Now you have an insane amount of cash. You can just use this every turn with a battery. And the dude will just like do like 30 to 50% damage to a group of enemies and then tempt them 100% chance for one turn. He's just, that's why he's broken. Like just that thing. Because it, it's so good. It's really good. There's no downside at all. He has high health. You just hit him with a huge fucking bag of money and then just flip them. And they're really good. Uh, Piccoletta, I would say, is A tier. She's definitely not broken. Um, there's a lot of upsides to her in New Game Plus. She she out, she literally does outdamage Narv spamming items uh, because she can just run speed items and she never needs a battery. Uh, she also has a good frame. Like she has really she has six move and three jump or five move and four jump. You can either get four jump and five move or you can get the extra move. So you can turn you can switch to like more jump if you need to climb better. Or more movement if you need to move better. She also has really good magic defense and physical defense and good base health and high evasion. She's extremely tanky. She's basically, and she also has six passive range and can target any weakness just like Narv. Uh, but if you throw two speed items on her, like a speed bracelet and a speed amulet or two speed bracelets, she will out damage Narv and be competitive damage uh, to, um, I don't know, probably like Roland. She'll probably be competitive with him. Uh, Frederica will out damage her a little bit. But Piccoletta can tank way better than Frederica, and she's she's a zero TP, super tanky, super evasive, can make a decoy whenever she feels like it, because she'll just be sitting on five TP the whole match anyways, and the decoy still survives at least a single hit. Usually it survives an average two to four hits on hard mode, new game plus level 50. Really good. Uh, Medina, definitely game-breaking. Uh, she just spams, you know, 10 TP a turn. Pretty straightforward. Um... Yeah, it's good. Azana, she's actually going to move up to S tier. Uh, so Azana is really good. Um, originally, I had her at A just for like pinging things with lightning bolts, and then 60% paralyzed is very strong. But with her accuracy build, you run two accuracy bracelets. Each one increases her accuracy on lightning strike by 10%, giving her plus 20. You use an accuracy, uh, a precise spice on her that gives her another plus five accuracy, so another plus 10% accuracy. Uh, you get plus 30% accuracy on her five TP right of thunderstorms, and it's a board nuke, and you run Benedict and Medina and Julio, and you just keep feeding her battery, and you just keep turn accelerating her, and she just keeps board nuking with like 50 to 70% accuracy. So at least 50% of the board gets hit every single use, generally. You can increase the accuracy further by running like Archibald and using Sticky Arrow to reduce enemy evasion on close enemies. You can also use Avlora to use No Escape to reduce evasion, increasing her hit rate on them with the ability. Uh, if you sleep an enemy, 100% hit rate. If you paralyze with another unit, 100% hit rate. If you t stop time with Time Child, which is very annoying and tedious to do, 100% hit rate on everything. Uh, you can also so sleep, paralyze... I think there's a third thing, but they're, they're at least those two cause enemies to have 0% chance to dodge, so they always get hit. And she also has a 30% chance to paralyze when per hit, and paralyzing random enemy units causes them to be delayed in their formation. So if like 20 enemies are pushing you, and three of them or four of them get paralyzed, now only 17 are pushing you, and then if you do that again, and two or three more get paralyzed, like it just keeps... It just keeps splitting enemies apart, which makes the game ridiculously easy because when enemies get split apart when they're pushing, you just kill them. They just, like, feed. Like, they just come to you, like, one or two at a time. You just easily deal with them. So she completely ruins the like Like, some of these units, frankly, just ruin the game. <laughs> like, these ones are just... They just trivialize all of hard mode, and it's just... Like, if you run all of these, you're just going to not have fun because it's going to be way too easy if you just know how to use them. Now, Archibald... Hmm. So let's think about this. He's probably at least an A tier. He's definitely not S. Um, S tier, like almost broken. He's not almost broken. Inescapable arrow spam is nice to like cheese some maps, but it's just worse than this. And you still need a battery. So if you're going to cheese a map through like range gimmick, this is better. Uh, so his damage is good. Swift end is good. Arrow spray is good. 
I'm pretty sure he can get a swift end on throwing AoE stones as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, he can also get it from Arrow Spray, which is an AoE. So he has some pretty good like overall damage and utility. He can reduce enemy evasion. He has extremely high accuracy. Um, that's you know that's pretty much all you really need to know. He's just good. Um, Cordelia, I would just say is B. Like these healers and like these supports, like they're good. But like compared to this shit, like shutdown's better than mitigation and healing, frankly. Like honestly. You can get away with not running healers at all in New Game Plus, assuming you just have Medina on your team, because she's basically a healer. Um, you can run them, but if you just run enough shutdown and damage, you just kill things and shut them down before they can even be a threat. And as long as you know what you're doing, it's like way easier to do this. Uh, so I would say that's the case. Travis. All right, so Travis... I'm going to put him in C tier. I'd say he's sometimes good. His main thing is steal back. He's basically worse than Eridor. He doesn't have Fury. His damage could be better. He has some single target damage. Um, it can be okay. But his damage isn't isn't even close to, like, these two. Like, this will out-damage him, probably. Uh, Gnar will definitely out-damage because of the AoE. Heavy blow, or heavy smash, basically just sucks. It's really hard to set up. Uh, a charged melee attack with 1 to 2 range is just not good. Because most things aren't going to be... Like, here, here's how you encounter enemies generally. If there's, like, two enemy mages, an archer, and, like, two enemy melee, and they're all moving towards you, they're going to split apart soon. So if you high jump them or if you glacial moon them before they split apart, that's when you get your big hits in. But once they fucking split, once the, the archer, the mage, and the healer kind of like move a little bit and they're kind of distant and then this like the enemy like spear and shield guys split from them then they're in like groups of twos and threes and that is why heavy heavy smash sucks because enemies will split apart and he can't get into the big meat where there's like five fucking enemies next to each other there's maybe like one or two maps where there's a ton of melee spam just running at you and then sure he can kind of do that but aside from that it's just like really inconsistent and hard to use and not in a way where it's even rewarding. Like, it's just worse than Glacial Moon and High Jump. Um, and then his other stuff, uh, the single target stuff, the for one TP is okay. Uh, but mages do it better. So why bother? He, he, has, he has poor movement, only five move. Uh, his movement prevents him from getting to enemy mages and archers. And by the time he would get to them, they're dead anyways. So he can't, he can't like... Be like, you know, Roland, Milo, Maxwell, and fucking jump in there and start fucking shit up. He kind of is like delayed and slow and, you know, too, too climb. Very bad. Uh, Trish? Hmm. Trish. I don't know if she's an A or a B. The case for her being A is item spam. But, well, no, no, I think this is fair. I think, I think A is fair. So you don't even use her bow. <laughs> you just throw items. You use act twice. Here's why this is good. Trish has good defensive stats, much like Piccoletta. She can give herself like two turns for two turns, like one, you know, two turns for one turn, two turns for second turn. So she can move, use act again. And then once it's her next turn, throw it, move, throw an item, move, throw an item. This allows her to push into dangerous territory, throw an item, next turn, throw an item, move out of dangerous territory. You throw a movement bangle on her or a Benedict Bird of Prey, and every time she moves, she gets that extra plus one move per turn. So she just gets all this damage compression, and she usually has enough time to use Act again because in the game you're usually not constantly in combat. You'll fight like a group of like five to seven maybe eight enemies and then you have to move on to fight another group of enemies so there's usually time for her to get act again off without it being a liability and she also gets to move while doing it and she can also do crazy shit like you know move act again and then act again move leap move leap and now she's moved like 20 tiles or some crazy nonsense so she has absurd mobility she has good durability she can climb high ground she can damage compress uh, she can also use her physical attacks when needed. So, like, instead of throwing elemental stones on an enemy mage or healer with high magic defense, she can run up behind them and just start unloading arrows into them for pretty big back crits. So she kind of is similar to Anna in this way, but she, obviously Anna is much better because she has passive two turns. 
Uh, but she is good. She's actually a lot better than pe- most people realize, I think. And the like, the one Trish video I made on her, I, I like went over this. She probably will out damage Archibald in a lot of situations if you hit a, if you can get enough things getting hit with AOE stones. Because unlike Archibald, she's not TP dependent. She can just keep throwing and spamming items. And he, the other thing too is, what you do is you act again, item spam, item spam, next turn, item spam, item spam, uh, next turn. So like the first turn, all right, let's say you're at zero TP, right? So turn one, you're at three TP, you, are, you uh, act again, zero TP. Turn one, one TP, item spam. Turn two, item spam, uh, two TP. Turn three, act again, you're at three TP again. So she can maintain it. So as long as there's like there's like uh, slow periods or like high points and low points in combat where she's out of combat and like you're moving in between groups, two turns of item spam usually is enough to kill a bunch of enemies. And then she, you're going to be moving on to the next group. So there's usually not a downside to it because frankly most units have dead turns in between this, these like situations anyways. So she actually is very good. Uh, Milo, I would say she's S tier. Uh, Power of Love being able to 100% tempt at range next to a battery. She can just sit next to Ramparts and Medina and just fucking spam this every turn. It's so insane. Uh, the reason why I'd say it's about as good as this is because it's free. It just costs TP instead of money. Uh, also, she can single target tempt for two turns, 80%. So she can just push a flank and just start flipping enemy archers on high ground. And now they're your archers, which is hilarious and stupid. Uh, she can like flip enemy healers or enemy mages, and then they all, all the enemies will focus that mage down and help you kill it. And then if that mage gets to cast a spell, it'll deal like 200 damage to one of its allies. Like she's insane. She's really dodgy. There's literally no downside to running her. She has a little bit of single target damage. She can always throw a stone. Really high evasion. Just a really good unit. Uh, Maxwell also S tier. High jump is really good. Two birds, one stone spam with AOE items is really good. Uh, just him passively stabbing things in the back can be decent. Uh, triple thrust for one TP against enemy squishies can do like 50% of their health in one hit. So that's pretty good. Uh, he really doesn't have many downsides. He also has the revive. He's insane. All right, Grama. So I would say she's generally good. In the one in the Grama video, I said she might be a, she might be a tier. Uh, but the more I, like the more I run her, like she can be situationally good. Um, so like if you, if you have ice spam, if you have, like you have, you have to accommodate for her and if you do, she can be okay. But Eridor is always better. He's way easier to use. Uh, she, she can have, like the thing is she needs to have some durability on her, whether it be dragon shield, uh, current and ice shield, um, Gila res, res earring, Cordelia overheal. She needs... Her 420 health, if she randomly gets hit in the back from an enemy back crit, which can easily happen, um, she's going to take, like, half her health. And that's bad. So she needs, like, some help. She needs two evasion bracelets, I think. She needs to be on ice. She needs a lot of conditions. Once you get her going, though, like, once you get all those ice tiles from Glacial Spam, she can just keep, like, furying things and, you know, catch evasion buff from cordelia and overheal like these two are good together uh res like she can use have a evasion spice on her which is similar to this buff and then put gila res that's also good uh, as long as you have some some safety net she's fine because then when she actually does get hit it's fine uh but she's like generally good she's not like she's not as good as these i would say and she's definitely better than these she's about as good as these uh avlora Hmm. I would say she's A tier. This might seem strange, but in order for her to be S tier, you have to run fewer units, which means you're running less of this to run this. And this is a low mobility unit that, true, she can hit hard, uh, but Glacial Moon and High Jump generally will out damage like a low unit count Avlora using Bloody Cross. And it's way easier to set those up, and it's way safer, and you don't have to run low unit count. So the opportunity cost of running her is that you have to run fewer units if you want her to be good. Uh, alternatively, she's just kind of low mobility. She does have desperate defense, which is nice, uh, but sometimes it's not that good. If you get if you're at like 55% HP and then you get hit with a spell, it doesn't trigger. So you take full damage, and now you're at low health. So desperate defense, while good, um, generally favors 
taking small packets of damage. So like if you get hit for like 50, 50, 100, 50, and then you hit, then it triggers and you're at like 45% health, that's when it's good. Uh, but it can be a liability at times if you because it makes you think you're tankier than you really are. And you can just get caught off guard and hit for a lot of damage out of nowhere. Like at like 50 or 60% health, now you're at like 20% health. <laughs> so, and she can't, it's hard for her to escape a situation. Uh, Maxwell, he can, he can move and traverse, that's eight movement. He can traverse over enemies and then run away. He can traverse into high ground. He can move and traverse into high ground. Uh, Roland can rush through enemies and then move like seven. He can easily kite anything in the game. Uh, so a lot of the units that like can kind of get into the fray can usually get out of it. She's stuck there. She's got five move and two jump, no mobility options. So if she's in the fray, she's in the fray. She's usually more turtley. She's good on death ball. But the thing with death ball is you can not run her and it's fine. Death ball is mostly carried by Flanagan, Corinthian, and Medina. So, all right, that's my thing on her. Because, like, in order for her to be strong, you have to stop running units, which by definition of, you know, a team game, it's like, okay, well, this, you can have a super queen in chess that can capture, that can move twice, but you have to start the game with no other material except for a king. It's like, well, that's crazy. <laughs> so, that's, like, the situation she's in. Um, for Barrel, I would say he's just generally good. Um, sometimes I put him in A tier. Honestly, his thing is like the height plus five spam. That's like his biggest asset. The rest of the damage is just so inconsistent. Like, here's the thing. This is better. This is so much better. Doesn't matter where she is. She can be anywhere on the map. She can be on, you know, really super high ground on a ladder, but blocking a ladder, just standing next to Medina and, Be and Benedict, getting battery, getting nowed spamming this all game she can be completely safe doesn't matter she can hit anywhere on the map she is objectively like way stronger and the paralyzed trigger like the fact like what it does to enemies like delaying them and like splitting their forces she's way better than barrel her one skill is just way better uh, his random damage is annoying to play around the fact that he never regenerates tp is annoying to play around the height plus five thing is decent but for how much you get from it, I'd rather just spam Glacial Moon or Rite of Thunderstorms, and those are just way better, or Golden Opportunity. Even Power of Love spam would be better, because you could flip enemy mages and they could just start nuking their teammates, and that would get you big damage just by flipping them. Uh, Golden Opportunity is way better damage. The range thing, this is better range. Uh, Paralyze, better range, more consistent, even though it has like, you know, 50 to 80% chance to hit, kind of averaging to like 60, 65%, which is really good because uh, it's a board nuke. Um, it's just more consistent because like if, if it's a flat map, height plus five does nothing. If you're on high ground and they're on low ground, height, height plus five does nothing. If the enemy health values aren't ideal, he can't do anything. If he can't catch battery all the time, he can't do anything. There's just so many downsides to running him. When he works, he's good, but he's never very strong. He's never consistent because of all the randomness to his kit. The randomness of the health values, the randomness of the enemy positions. Um, I, I just think he's just straight up worse than Izana. Uh, now that I've like seen how crazy Izana is with just two accuracy bracelets and then a spice, it's like that pushes her skill to like more, ac like it's like usually like 30 to 50%. It pushes it to like 50 to 80, which is nuts. So just insane. And then he's just okay. Giovanna. She's actually really good. Uh, Gelid Barrage is kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where you just throw large range AoE ice stones, you just trek all day, throw a res earring on her, she just zooms around the map creating ice tile lines. You run current in as well, there's just ice everywhere. You just keep like lane nuking. If you want to run a battery, she can just spam Gaia's Roar, which on average can easily hit like two to five enemies even on maps with crazy terrain. Uh, most maps that have like height elevation and elevation changes have flat sections where you can line enemies up and just hit them with Gaia's Roar. So she can just catch battery and just spam Gaia's Roar, or she can catch like very minor battery or no battery and just like throw ice stones, you know, get TP from trekking. She has a durable frame, good magic defense, good durability, lane nuker magic, you know, gelid barrage spam, or just get catch battery and spam Gaia's Roar. Uh, and then, of course, Kohog's game-breaking. Uh, the way he breaks the game, the, I would say the optimal way he breaks the game is you have uh, Corentin use Glacial Moon, Maxwell use High Jump, 
Uh, probably like Frederica hit for some damage and probably just have like an Anna throw like some ice, some stones. You just have everyone just like blow everything. You could have like his big, his golden opportunity pop off. You have Julio, you reset everyone after you kill things, uh, resets their TP. Um, it basically, it basically controls the entire match so that everything's in your favor. So there's like no downside of uh, burning through all these abilities. And then you just have Julio hit him with um, Inheritor, and then he just does it again next turn. So you just burn through your Glacial Moon, your High Jump, your Golden Opportunity. Uh, you could do like Pillar of Flame or Scorch, whatever. Because you can't Sunfall without Turn Accelerator anyways. Uh, you could have Narv be part of this if like enemies are balled up. But you just like you just nuke everything with like three to five TP abilities. Kill like three to four enemies, board reset, pulls everyone back, resets their TP, pushes the enemies that advanced on you back. All the dead enemies don't get reset because they're dead. You just keep running through this until you, you beat maps. Um, yeah, it's kinda it's kinda dumb. <laughs> it's it's honestly it's more work than doing this. And it's probably not even as good. Because this at least with this, like things go by fast. And with this, I mean, I mean, you could argue it goes by fast, but like if the turn order gets messed up, like if Julio um, doesn't go before or after Kohog, it really matters for resetting him, and like all like things can go wrong with like the turn order. If certain units have high speed, the turn order get messed up, like in a way that's not good for the the build. So that, like that's honestly, it's easier just to run these three than to run him. So hilariously. The broken unit has like some company, <laughs> like these two. Um, best AOE unit the game by far. Like he's just way too strong. The, he has no downside. Uh, you could argue. The heck is that? <laughs> you could argue. Um, I don't even know what I'm saying. I just saw something crazy. Okay, so. Oh yeah, you could argue his durability is a problem, right? Like his durability is his downside, but it's really not because he can put shield of ice on himself and he solves that problem himself. Or you can just have this guy stand next to him with ramparts and now he's fine. Now he can be tanky as fuck. And then if you also shielding stance, now he's quarter damage and enemies will always attack him and deal no damage to him. And then he can shield of ice Flanagan just in case magic hits Flanagan. And these two are just kind of like, these three really are insane. And this and and Kohog's honestly fine for breaking the game too if you want to break the game with him, um, but I think this is pretty accurate. Uh, there's no no one's really D tier, no one's really bad. Like Hasabara is at least okay. Like we could we could also say this is like okay tier. Like these these units are okay. They're not going to do anything crazy. And this could be like good, and this could be like great. And this could be like amazing and this could be why <laughs> here let's or let's uh here we go all right there's your tiers different descriptors <laughs> why tier amazing or maybe even insane i think because amazing i don't think covers it these are like insane units these are like great units these are good units these are okay units i think that's fair so this is the definitive tier list of this game um, I, at least in my opinion, I think this is as close to accurate, at least as far as we know, with like the, all the information. Because like, I don't think anyone would have thought Trish is an item spammer, or Piccoletta spamming items is so good, or that Anna is as good as she is. Um, Azana is also insane. Uh, Hewet's never bad. So like, these S tiers are ridiculous. If you just run all of these, you really feel it. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Like, if you use Power of Love and then Golden Opportunity. You can flip two groups of separate enemies, and then the game just plays itself. They just start fighting each other if there's not other hostile, like, non-tempted enemies near them. It's insane. And then if you just battery both of them, they can just keep doing that endlessly, and the game plays itself. Like, you can't argue that's not OP. Pinning a thing in place for three turns while taking it to half health, like enemy mages and shit, that's insane. Um, soloing maps is insane. His CC is ridiculous. Her range thing is insane. High jump spam and durability is nuts. Um... Everything she can do is crazy. And then these these four just break the game um, in a way that's not... Corentin, I think Corentin out of these is like the least overpowered. So if I were to arrange these by power within their tier, I think that could be useful. Um, Kohog really relies on other things. I, I would say this is the absolute best unit. Sorry. This is the... Medina is the absolute best unit in the game. And then Flanagan, then Kohog, then Corentin. And then for these... 
I would say she's on the lower end of S tier. Uh, for higher end of S tier, uh, the absolute highest, let's think about this. Um, absolute highest. Maybe, I think Anna is actually fair. I think Anna, Arador, you, 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 you. I think this is actually what I would put it. Because, like, she can do literally everything and is an absolutely insane unit. He is really good at shutdown. Uh, she requires the setup, but with the setup, she can just completely cheese every single map in the game. Uh, Golden Opportunity is definitely better than Power of Love if you were to spam both of them. Because it's just the same thing, but also damage. So if you just have the economy for it, which you can easily farm, it's just better. And then High Jump isn't as good as this, the crazy shutdown these have, but it's obviously insane. And then her ability just to like do whatever the hell she wants, whenever the hell she wants, and just pin things to the ground for three turns constantly, or blind them for four is and then also shooting star back crits for like half of enemy's health which is also crazy um that's also really good and then for a tier uh the best a tier let's see i mean she's a really she's probably the closest to s out of all of these then i'd probably put him uh yen's is probably lower a She's probably up there. I'd put her up here. Put him like here, maybe. She's definitely the best A tier. He's these are like close second and third. Actually, I don't know. I think I think pick a lot of item spamming is generally better than Roland because she can make decoys and she can always hit like you know enemies in rows of threes or plus shapes for good damage and target weaknesses. So, and she's just like more durable because of her high evasion and similar defensive stats. I think she has better defensive stats than Roland, which makes no sense because she's literally a child, but whatever. That's a good video game. Um, and then honestly, Trish is probably a little bit better than Roland. And then probably these are like similar. They both have similar downsides, similar durability. She's more tanky to magic. His movement makes him kind of nuts, uh, but she has like similar movements with using act again and just the item spam is ridiculous. Um, and then between these two, I'd say Sarah Noah is slightly better. Uh, Archibald, probably better than Avalor on average. Inescapable Arrow is way more useful. And I would say Yen's is like lower A. And then for these, uh, I would actually put Grama at high B tier. Probably Grama than Benedict. Um, and then like these. And then... Probably like this, because she's she's like closer to A than she is to C, but she's still definitely a B tier, because like if she gets hit, like she needs accommodated for her, so she, she's not like, like the reason Huet's S is because she's just self-sufficient, just pins things to the ground, she just, go, she just goes off. You don't even need to do anything. Same thing with like Piccoletta throwing items, she just keeps throwing fucking items. You don't have to do, you literally have to do nothing. And the overall effect is that it's good damage, and she's tanky, she has good mobility, she can throw decoys down, she can like... Like, one of the big upsides to decoy is you can put it away from your team and enemies will move away from your team and push towards the decoy. So Piccoletta can, like, hold flanks and draw enemies away, wasting their turn, wasting their, you know, pulling them away in terms of movement, splitting them from the enemy forces that are pushing your main forces. And she can just do this. She can throw out a decoy and then run away. And then enemies will generally attack it because she can cast decoy at range, right? So she can cast decoy while being safe on a flank, pulling enemies away from... A push so then there's fewer enemies to attack your teammates even if one just one enemy gets delayed that makes it so much easier then you combine that with like Huet pinning another enemy now two enemies are delayed so like if you can just keep delaying enemies the game just plays itself it's like way too easy uh, but Grama has has to be accommodated for her. Uh, she needs like someone else to put some buff on her to keep her safe because when she does get hit because she is a fury spammer she can get hit for like 200s in the back uh, she needs like a, a safety net, but when she has that, she's pretty good. Uh, he's pretty good. Um, like Dragon Shield is good, but like is Dragon Shield? I mean, traps are insane. The ladder. I mean, he's here because the ladders. Because I'm like thinking like Dragon Shield versus ladders. I mean, if you can find a, a section of the map where you can put all your units on a ladder, that like breaks the game. So that's like at least eight here. <laughs> Whereas Dragon Shield is like not as good as that. Um, and for like attacking, you're better off with crowd control, as I've outlined earlier. And you have some ranged options to open enemies up. 
with crowd control. So a little bit stronger than defensive options. Uh, the healers are just decent. Closer to B plus or A tier. Narv and like these, these are like Narv is definitely better than him, and he's better than him. And then for these, I would say this. All right, so this is like an, in order now. So best, worst, best, worst, best, worst, based on my opinion of their overall strength. And this is for new game plus. So the previous list was for fresh save. This is for new game plus. We added C tier, put a lot of dudes in B tier. Uh, the healers are good, but if you just, like just try not running them and just focus on shutdown. So like you focus on spiking things down and then shutting down the things you're not spiking, and you'll find that you can get away with not using healers on New Game Plus. On fresh save, you don't have the setup for it. You need healers. Healers are like A tier on fresh save because your your healing items suck, your economy's bad, and you need spot healing because you don't have enough shutdown on a fresh save because like all of your good shutdown units don't get their good shit until new game plus. So, but once they do, then it changes to being all about shutdown and damage. And if you look at all these units, aside from these two, they're all about shutdown damage or in his case mitigation. So I guess these three. So, so it's the top three units in the game are utilities, <laughs> which is kind of neat. Um, but, like, the thing, too, is, like, Medina wouldn't be good at all if everyone couldn't do that much damage, right? Like, her batterying things wouldn't be that useful if, like, abilities that use TP weren't that strong. So her strength really hinges on her being able to do something that's hard to do, which is restoring TP. And when she can do that, it allows the actual S... Like, it basically makes these things, like, some of these S tiers. Like, spamming King Shield is insane. Spamming Red of Thunderstorms is insane. Uh, golden Opportunity, Power of Love, High Jump, Shooting Star. These are all insane abilities. Uh, Shooting Star does deal more damage than Inescapable, if you're wondering. And it can back crit. I don't know if Inescapable can, but this, but uh, Inescapable Arrow, I do not believe, can follow-up attack. So Huet can trigger follow-up attack and back crit off of, in, off of Shooting Star. So it's actually a little bit stronger than Inescapable. It does cost one more TP, though. So, so that is obviously a downside. But... Yeah, I think this is pretty reasonable. Um, some people might be surprised by these. But when you know how to use these, they're va actually very fucking good. So kind of similar to Roland, where people thought Roland was terrible, and they just didn't understand that he needs to get in and out. You know, like, even... He doesn't need to get out far. He just needs to get out so that, like, one or two things can hit him and he can tank it. That's all he needs. He doesn't need to be, like, like a mile away from the enemy. He just needs to be, like... You need to position him, like just on the, the edge of danger where he can get attacked by like one or two things and they probably won't attack him because there's more of like viable targets to hit that's that's how you play roland and then for her she just like th these item spammers they're pretty good they're pretty fucking good um <laughs> just like shaking people uh but yeah that's pretty much it for i'll call it my ultimate definitive guide um for triangle strategy hard mode this is the new game plus one uh, you might be surprised to see flanagan on here but it's uh, he's undeniably game breaking ramparts is way too strong like just putting just even casually running ramparts you just feel it you're just like holy shit i can just tank all these hits it's 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 absurd it's like what the fuck <laughs> i can just tank like 10 hits you know from enemies and it doesn't matter cool <laughs> um like, yeah, he's the magic weakness, but you put a shield on him. You put a Sarah Noah shielding stance on him. He's fine. Um, yeah, I think that's it for this one. Uh, definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Um, I hope they update this game because I would like to come back to it. I wouldn't say I'm completely done with it. I still have some hard or some new game plus fresh or I'm sorry, some fresh save deathless guides to make. But aside from that, um, yeah, I think this is it. So, see ya.